Hello everybody and welcome to another wildlife photography tutorial. This video is all about exposure compensation. I'm going to show you what it is, how to adjust it to get better results and I'm going to give you some examples in the field. So what I'm going to tell you is largely going to apply if you're using evaluative metering, sometimes called matrix metering and perhaps centuated metering as well. So when you point your camera at a subject, what you see in the viewfinder, that's where the camera is taking its light reading from. You get familiar with the exposure meter, it's often at the bottom of the viewfinder, sometimes it might be on the left hand side or even the right hand side. Using exposure compensation is really going to apply if you're using a semi-automatic mode such as aperture priority or shutter priority or maybe even program mode. If we're photographing very neutral subjects, neutral tones and neutral backgrounds, green grass is a very good example, then it's likely that the camera will get the exposure pretty accurate. But when we have very dark backgrounds, very light backgrounds, that's where the camera gets a bit confused. That's where we need to do some exposure compensation. With our exposure meter, we're going to see a needle in the middle and we can adjust that to the left or to the right to make our image brighter or darker to get a more accurate exposure. You'll also find this video in the wildlife photography tutorial playlist on my channel. So how do we know when we need to make these changes? Well, if we're photographing a subject towards a very light background, then that's going to fool the camera. It's going to reduce the light and underexpose the image. So in that case, we want to overexpose. We want to go in the plus direction. The opposite of that, if we're photographing a subject towards a very dark background, that's going to cause the camera to think it needs more light, it's going to overexpose the image. We need to do the opposite of that and we need to underexpose minus. If you're photographing a subject against a blank white sky, then I would suggest overexposing by about plus one and a third. If you're shooting against the background that's just a little bit lighter toned in nature, such as this, or maybe nice golden reeds, then I would suggest going for around plus two thirds. If you're shooting against a darker background like this, then I suggest underexposing maybe around minus two thirds or minus one. It is quite common in wildlife photography, if you are shooting towards a, a dark background, then you can often get blown out whites in the subject because the camera overexposes too much. So that's why you definitely want to underexpose in that situation. What I would say, if, if the bird or the animal you're photographing is quite dark in tone, then I wouldn't worry about it as much. But I would advise just underexposing a little bit anyway, maybe minus a third, minus two thirds. I think you'll get a better exposure by doing that. Photographing white subjects or subjects with a lot of white in them is always really, really difficult in terms of exposure compensation. There are so many combinations. It really depends on how big the subject is in the frame, uh, what the tone of the background is, and crucially, how strong the light is, how much contrast there is as well. So really, it's best learned by trial and error and experience. I'll put a link to a video at the end of this one if you want to learn more about that. You might be wondering what's actually changing because we're merely moving a dial to alter the exposure. If you're in aperture priority and you adjust the exposure compensation, then it will change the shutter speed. If you're in shutter priority and you adjust the exposure compensation, it will change the aperture. If you're in program mode and you adjust the exposure compensation, it seems to, I think it usually just changes them both kind of in increments. And if you're using auto ISO, then it will adjust the exposure compensation by changing the ISO. If you'd like to learn more about exposure in wildlife photography, then click the video up here. If you're not subscribed, then do click the subscribe button up here. I just click the tripod. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.